There you go. Now we're going to continue with the same handout, Gaussian elimination or slash Gauss Jordan. And so here we have a three by three system. And if you guys notice, we have three equations and we have three variables, x, y, and z. So what we need to make sure first before we create the augmented matrix that you can see on the right side is to make sure they are lined up, I, and I call it alphabetical order, x, y, z. So this represents the coefficients of all the x terms. If you notice, is 1, negative 1, and 2. Those are the coefficients of y terms, so negative 2, positive 3, and negative 5. And those are the coefficients of the uh, z term, so 3. There's no z here, so there's a 0. That's why we have to account for a 0. And then for, and then for the third equation, we have a 5. Now, on the right side, we see the constant terms, and those are 9, negative 4, and 17. So now, what, I'm, what the, op, the elementary row operations, the ones that we mentioned here, um, they are being described here as a sentence. So what I'm going to do is write down uh, with row notation, okay? And that's what I want you to copy. So you notice here, we must start with the first column. First, we need to make that one. It's already a one, so there's nothing to do there. So we can proceed to, with the next step, which will be to make this negative one into a zero. So because of that, the leading row was R1. Multiply that. What is the additive inverse of negative one? How can you make a zero? A positive one. And then we add that to R2. So that's what it says here as a sentence. This is row notation. Next step was to make this two turn it into a zero. So by using the same leading row, which is R1, now what is the additive inverse of two? Negative, Negative two. Good, you guys are learning. And now we add that to R3. Yes. We're trying, remember our goal is to get identity on the left side. So that, and that we work by column. So once you have that one, we make the other two zeros. So that's why we're using the additive identity. I mean, additive inverse, I'm sorry. Okay, now we're done with the first column. We move to the second column. What do we need to do first, the one or the zeros? The one. And that one, luckily, we already have it. So we can skip that step. Now we need to turn this negative two, I'm, I think I did this one first, this negative one into a zero. So which one is the leading row now? It's not R1 anymore. R2, R2. So the leading row is the one that contains the one once you move on to the next column. So R2 times, what is the additive inverse of negative one? Positive one. one. And then we add, we add R3. Now after that, the next step is to make this negative two turn it into a zero. So we use the same leading row, which is R2, what is the additive inverse of negative two? Positive two, and then we add R1. Okay, we're almost done. Now, we finished the first two columns. What is next? We move to the next column. But what is the first thing we must do on the third column? The one or the zeros? The one, the one. So we need to turn this two into a one. And so for that, we're going to use to the multiplicative inverse. So what do you need to multiply two by to get a one? A half. And like I said, the same thing that I'm writing here with row notation, you can see this, the statements here. So that was the next step. After that, we need to make this nine, turn this nine into a zero. Which one is the leading row now? 
R3 is the leading row. Actually, let's write that down. <laughs> so we started with R1 being the leading row. And then here, R2 became the leading row. So now um, R3 is the leading row. So to turn this 9 into a negative, I'm sorry, a 0, we need to use the additive inverse. So what is the additive inverse of 9? Negative 9. And that's what happened here. And now the last step is to turn this 3 into a 0. So by using the same leading row, which is R3, we say R3 times the negative, to, um, sorry, the additive inverse of 3 is negative 3. So R3 times negative 3 plus R2. And that's what happened here. And now at the end, once you have identity on all three, um, I'm sorry, identity all across the, the left side of the augmented matrix, Remember identity, that means that you have ones across the main diagonal. So once you have that, this is what it means. The first column represents x, so that means that x is equal to 1. Second column represents y, so 1y is equal to negative 1. And the third column represents z, so 1, one z is equal to positive 2. Okay, so now uh, let's look at the back side of your handout. And now we're going to go over some concepts, and then I will show you how to do this on the calculator. You're going to love it. All right, so um, Andrew, could you please read the, the next statement? The last matrix is said to be in row reduced equity on the form. Echelon form. Echelon form. Mm -hmm. The term echelon refers to the stair step pattern formed by the non zero elements of a matrix. Okay. A matrix is in a row reduction echelon from RREF. Huh? Very good. If every column that has a leading one has zeros in every position above and below, it's leading one. Okay. So let me um, tell you here we have that. Uh, I'm not sure if it's a Greek or Latin word, I'm sorry, but it means uh, stair step pattern. So let me show you what we mean by that. If you look on the other side of your handout, this is your stairs step pattern right here. Okay, and so as you know already, um, if we use the first letter of every word, we come up with this, R-R-E-F, oops, R-R-E-F. And I think I have them um, backwards. It should be reduced row echelon form. And you already know that we, we have ones and then zeros. Um, Victoria, read the next statement, please. Yeah, yeah, that one. Excellent. Uh -huh. So identity on the left and numbers on the right. So please uh, underline or highlight whatever I'm highlighting or underlining. Um, so let me show you three examples. When we talk about a system with no solutions, those are inconsistent, right? You guys remember that diagram that we made? When we talk about systems that have one solution or infinitely many solutions, those systems are called consistent. Now, when we talk about a two by two system, we're talking about a two dimensional plane known as x, y, correct? Yes? So a system that has no solutions 
in a two by two, a two by two system, uh, do you guys remember what type of lines are those? The what? They don't intersect, right? So how do we call those lines? Parallel. Mm -hmm. Parallel. So that will be an example. When we talk, when we translate that into a three by three system, we're not going to talk about lines anymore. We're going to talk about planes. So if you imagine like three papers, just like, maybe this is too big. Like just three papers parallel like that. Something like that, okay? So that's what the picture is representing here. Um, another way is if they don't intersect all three at the same time, like here and here, all right? This ones are called parallel planes. Now, when we talk about a three by three system, well, let's go back a little bit, a two by two system. Um, in the XY plane, two-dimensional, those are lines that intersect at one point, right? But when we talk about a three-dimensional system or three-dimensional plane, uh, they will intersect at one point and they look like that. So I want you guys to look around the room and tell me where you see something like that. The corners, right? 